Okay, find the derivative of each function. So it looks like we've got some stuff on the inside for these. So um, for a and b especially, we've got exponents involved. So let's go ahead and use that power rule, like what we were talking about uh, in the la at the end of the last video. So I can pull the four down, decrease the power by one, and then do the derivative of the inside. So the inside is the u, so then the u prime is the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So the u prime would be uh, 2x minus eight. And that's all you'd have to do. You can factor out a two from here and multiply it to the four. Um, you can multiply the four into the two x minus eight, or you can just leave it alone. All right, part B, even though it's a radical, you still got an exponent. It's just the exponent's a one third. The cube root is a one third power. So now I can use that power rule again. So pull the one third down. Decrease by one. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that would be a two X. And nothing simplifies out of that. You could flip this down to the denominator. You can change it back into a radical if you want. Um, usually, if it's if um, if the fraction is like two thirds, uh, or where the numerator is something other than one, I don't do anything with it. I just leave it like that, uh, just because changing it back to a radical looks worse than than that in my opinion. But you can do it if you want. But if you leave it this way, you're done. <clears throat> Okay, uh, part C. So the inside is your 2x plus cosine of x. So let's just kind of use that chain rule without like having to write everything out. So I need the derivative of sine. So that's cosine. The angle is gonna stay exactly the same, even though it's kind of massive and kind of weird. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside, or that choice for u. So the inside would be 2 minus sine of x. And I'm just going to pull this quantity out to the front. So it looks like this. Just so I'm really clear that the two minus sine of x is being multiplied to the cosine, not into the angle. So with trig functions, you know, you can do the derivative of the trig and then multiply by the derivative of the angle. <clears throat> okay, part D, uh, you can use the, the product rule with this if you wanted to. Uh, or you can just go, hey, I can rewrite that. So that's really like x times x to the half, or x to the first times x to the half, and then just add up your exponents. And then it's just the power, plain old power rule. That's a lousy three. So three halves root x. Okay, so not every problem in this homework section is going to require the chain rule. Um, sometimes they don't. You got to be aware of when to use it and when not to. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about powers of trig functions. Uh, so this is when you've got like sine squared or tangent to the third or the square root of secant. So the trig functions, when they have powers, they can be a little bit tricky. Um, so to simplify the process and kind of help, you know, spell it all out, uh, you're gonna use what's called PTA. Because when there's a power of a trig function and the angle is something other than X, you're kind of having to use a U substitution twice, uh, or like kind of, you have to use the chain rule within itself. So it's like the chain rule of the chain rule. So that can be a little cumbersome and a little bit um, tricky to kind of just sort of do. So instead you can use PTA to kind of help 
uh, organize everything out. So the P uh, is going to stand for power. The T would be the trig. And the A would be the angle. And so this gives you an order of when to use the derivatives of each thing. Uh, so if you follow it, it'll help organize that chain rule for uh, these complex functions. Uh, so we're still finding the derivatives. We didn't change the instructions from above. So let's give it a shot. So part G. Okay, so you've got a power on the trig function. So because it's sine squared of x. So when it says power, that really means just like the power rule. So you're going to pull the power down and decrease the power by one. So that's like sine of the first. So that right there is the P. That's the power part. Okay, so that's this part. Now move to the trig. What trig function is actually in here? Well, the trig function is sine. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. So that's the trig part of it. Now you can move to the angle part. So what's the angle? X. What's the derivative of X? 1. And that's the angle part of it. So P, T, A. So you have three things listed there. Uh, and then just multiply any constants together. Uh, so 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 sine x cosine of x. Now every once in a while the book likes to kind of throw in a trig identity to see if you're paying attention to stuff or to help you remember what they were. Uh, so 2 sine x cosine of x can also be rewritten as sine of 2x. So either one you want to give is totally fine. Okay, let's try example h using that pta stuff again. Okay, so the p is going to work with the power, so just use the power rule. So pull the power down, decrease the power by 1, Okay, so that's just the power part of it. Now the angle stays the same. The angles in the trig functions never ever change um, unless you're using an identity after you've done all the derivative stuff. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise they stay the same. Okay, so we pulled the power down and did the, all that stuff. So now we're moving on to the trig function. What trig function is in this thing right here? Sine, not sine squared. I'm just interested in the trig function not the exponent that goes with it. I already dealt with that. So the trig is sine. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. And again, the angle stays the same. And then the last part, now you can finally do the derivative of the angle. So the derivative of 7x is 7. So what, where students tend to kind of get mixed up is they want to do the derivative of the angle kind of first, and that's what they write as the angles inside the, the any trig functions that show up. That's not the case. The derivative of the angle should be the last thing you do, uh, and it gets multiplied on the outside. Not It doesn't change what the angles are in here. Okay, so let's kind of clean this up. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14. And if you wanted to, you can apply that double angle identity again and just say, hey, that's 7 times sine of 14x. You don't have to, but just be aware that that's possible. <clears throat> All right, let's try these next two. And we'll stop the video. All right, the derivative of g, uh, do the power rules, pull the 3 down, decrease the power by 1, angle stays the same. So that's the power. Now do the 
trig part. So what trig function is in here? Cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. And then finally, the derivative of the angle. The angle is x squared. The derivative of that is 2x. All right, so I can multiply the 2x to the 3 as well as the negative. It's negative 6x cosine squared of x squared times sine of x squared. Okay, and this last one. Sine squared of root x, so do the power, so pull it down. Decrease it by one. Okay, so that's power. Now move on to the trig part. So the trig function in there is secant. And again, not secant squared. You've already dealt with this exponent. If you take the exponent in this step, you're really gonna do the power part twice. So deal with the power, then deal with the trig function. So the trig function is secant. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Keeping the angle the same. Now you can do the derivative of the angle, so the derivative of root x, ran out of room, it's one half x to the negative half. So clean it up. Uh, so the two and the half cancel out. Secant times secant is secant squared. And x to the negative half, you can flip it to the denominator, so underneath all of that, and change it back to a radical. So all over root x. <clears throat> okay, so let's stop the video with this, and then we're gonna look at other types of functions and the chain rule, and kinda go from there.